Okay, direct loading method, uh, it is used to calculate the efficiency and voltage regulation of a transformer. This one is the transformer, which one we are using to perform direct loading method. Its specification, you can see, 1 kV rating, 110 volt slash 220 volt. Then so on primary, you can apply 110 volt constant and on secondary, you will get at no load condition 220 volt. It's a step of transformer. You can see uh, turns on primary uh, are less and turns on secondary are more. So it's a step of transformer. <clears throat> so this one transformer, it's voltage regulation and efficiency we are going to find out uh, using direct loading method. Direct loading method means directly load we used to put on secondary here. Lamp load we are using. Tungsten filament incandescent lamp. Uh, so it's a purely resistive load. So purely resistive load, uh, what is the power factor for purely resistive load? One. Ah, very good. It's a one. Very good. Total voltage and total current through that load, across that load, current through that load and uh, total current. And total voltage across that load uh, are in phase. So power factor will be unity. Very good. So here, directly lamp load we are going to put across transformer, uh, initially two lamps, then four lamps in parallel, then six, eight, ten, so on, okay? And as we go on increasing the load, uh, we will note down primary side voltage current and power and secondary side voltage current and power. And then we can calculate its voltage regulation and efficiency. Here, uh, arrow is there means what? Uh, load or transformer you continuously go on changing it is not constant okay now uh, in this method how much voltage you have to apply across primary see here how much voltage <coughs> primary side one volt. Volt. Ha, very good one and ten volt suppose this one experiment you are performing uh, in lab and you wanted to apply 110 volt, then how you can apply 110 volt? Available everywhere is how much? Single phase AC voltage. How much? 30 is? Volt. Very good. 220 to 30 volt is the voltage available. <clears throat> you have to apply how much? 110 volt single phase AC. So how we can apply? J3 batch in trans in uh, practical we have done that. <clears throat> auto transformer. Hmm? Auto transformer you have to use for that. Can everyone see auto transformer? That instrument with black color background. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Okay. Uh, so see here. Uh, Whenever to any circuit you wanted to apply variable AC voltage, you have to use auto transformer because available everywhere, all of you know single phase AC voltage, 220 volt. And if three phase you want, three phase also constant, 420 volt. In both the voltages, plus minus 5% tolerance will be there due to many parameters. One of the parameters is load. Due to load change, this voltage slightly changes. Okay, uh, again, uh, <clears throat> suppose uh, uh, I'm performing practical in lab and to first group I wanted to apply, suppose for series RLC circuit, uh, first group 100 volt, second group 120, third group. On auto transformer also questions are there in NSIM in in exam, everyone please concentrate. Okay, uh, so first group 120 volt, next group 140, 160, 220. 200, 190, so on. Hmm? With different voltages, I wanted to perform the practical. So it is not possible to use the number of step down transformer because available is 220. Uh, so number of step down or number of step up transformer to use not possible because a transformer is a costly device, isn't it? Instrument. So better way go for auto transformer. Single phase auto transformer is there. Three phase auto transformer is there. Uh, transformer also, single phase, three phase are there. Like in transformer, uh, uh, we have seen input and output is in which form? Yes, for transformer input and output is in which form? AC it is, isn't it? 
So if it is a single phase transform mode, input is single phase AC, output is also single phase AC. Same is the case here also. See, uh, single phase auto transformer, uh, single uh, single phase AC uh, on primary and uh, means on input side and on its output side also single phase AC. Okay, so um, this one auto transformer in brief in your syllabus included uh, like its symbol application advantages disadvantages okay um, so see here <clears throat> whatever this one terminal you can see here phase and neutral uh, input wires are there mm -hmm. uh, whatever suppose this one is a socket in this socket you uh, take one wire with three pin mm -hmm. so that three pin <clears throat> consider this one is a three pin Okay, so this three pin you put phase neutral and earning its terminal, and this wire three pin wire you connect over here. Mm -hmm. You have to connect over here. Means you are giving your input single phase AC to this auto transformer, which is constant. Okay, so input to this auto transformer is uh, constant <coughs> uh, single phase 220 volt, 50 hertz AC supply. And switch it on single phase AC input to this auto transformer. This is about the input. Now, what's about output? From where you can tap the output? Uh, so here, this one black color pin and red color pin, all of you can see. Hmm? So here you have to connect two wires. One wire you connect to black pin, another wire you connect to red pin. And then suppose you wanted to apply this input voltage to primary winding of transformer so connect it here like this okay so whatever its output i'm going to connect it across transformer primary winding i wanted to measure the voltage also how much it is so what i'll do i'll connect one voltmeter either across primary you connect or across these two output terminal you connect suppose i'm going to connect it across means this one how output you can apply uh, to any uh, circuit is this clear hmm? From these two pins, you can tap the output. Okay. Now, what you can do across these two terminals, you can connect one voltmeter also to check how much is the voltage, output voltage. AC voltmeter, you have to connect across these two output terminal. Uh, multimeter also you can use as an AC voltmeter. Uh, if you see this one auto transformer, it's a single phase. Um, and output voltage is to 0 to uh, 270 volt. If you sp see its specification, same is available in electrical lab also. If you see its specification, its uh, rating is given in KVA, 2.16 KVA, 8 ampere, means maximum how much load you can put on it so that the current is 8 ampere and output voltage is 0 to 270. Means from 0 to 270, you will get output voltage. Hmm? Input is fixed. So how we can get variable output, Output this one black color now, all of you can see, this black color now, you can rotate in clockwise direction. Hmm? Right now, this arrow is pointing to toward this black pin, means it is at off position. Uh, on this top, like this, beside this knob on its body, this one scale is there, like this, circular. So this is the scale, it is written over here, zero volt. Or where it is end, there it's written 270 volt. Okay, so this scale is from 0 to 270 volt, 0, 10, 20, 30, so on, up to 270 volt. So what you have to do? Uh, this marking you can see on the scale, but that is not more accurate. Better way you connect one voltmeter across these two output terminals and go on rotating this black color knob in clockwise direction from 0 to 270. Suppose I'm going to adjust it at 100 volt, you can see here voltmeter reading is 100 volt, okay? So what you can do, <coughs> suppose you wanted to adjust 110 volt, go on rotating this black color knob, so accordingly arrow also will rotate in this uh, clockwise direction. And once you see reading of voltmeter is 110 volt, stop rotating it and then apply this voltage to transform a primary value. Okay, so on in this range 20, 80, 70, 110, 120, 130, any voltage in the range 0 to 270, you will get across its two output terminal. Just you have to go on uh, changing the position of this knob. 
okay and input you have to give over here with the help of three pin hmm? and uh, <clears throat> once you put it at its maximum position suppose you have rotated it at 270 till this point maximum voltage here reading is 270 and uh, you are not using it you don't want to use it now so the whatever this three pin over here it supply that socket that switch you make off and this will knob this knob in anti-clockwise direction you have to bring it back to off position okay so auto transformer it is used <clears throat> um, to uh, obtain variable ac voltage when available is constant okay so available single phase ac voltage source constant everywhere <clears throat> variable whenever you want use auto transformer so what is the application of auto transformer is this clear Uh, so here you can see symbol of auto transformer transformer symbol all of you know what we have seen transformer symbol um, like this suppose it's a uh, it can be step up step down isn't it two types are there for transformer so suppose this one is a step up means more turns are there on secondary so how many windings are there in transformer this is a symbol for transformer how many windings are there for transformer Two windings are there. One is primary, another is secondary. Isn't it? Two separate windings are there. These two windings are not electrically connected, but they are magnetically coupled. Both are wound on same magnetic core. This is about the transformer. Input is single phase AC. Output is also single phase AC. It is used to step up or to step down the transformer. But this is the symbol for auto transformer. Uh, this one is step down and second one is step up. So can you see here how many windings are there in auto transformer? How many windings are there in auto transformer? One. Huh, very good. Only one winding is there. Okay. Uh, so see, uh, this one you can see all turns are there on primary. Input constant voltage, suppose 220 volt, you are going to apply on primary side. So all this 220 volt get applied across all the turns. Means complete turns are there on primary side. And very few turns are acting some part of it. These windings, some turns are available on output side. So you can see only this turns between C and B, these turns only. Across this turns, whatever the output voltage you will get, that is applied to load. Okay. So it's a step down transformer, uh, auto transformer. Hmm? Few turns are of it are there available on secondary side. Similarly, see the second one step up. So here you can see across all the turns, load is connected. See, here. across all turns, load is connected means um, all turns are there across secondary, but uh, see the pr uh, primary side, whatever the turns are there between Q and S, these turns acting on uh, are, or are acting as a primary. Input voltage 220 volt is applied only across these turns. Okay, so it's a step up auto transformer. <clears throat> uh, Ma'am, up step up. Okay, uh, so step up and step down auto transformer are there uh, here. Okay, uh, so for step up uh, auto transformer, you can see all turns are there uh, on secondary side and very few turns are there on primary side. Okay, so uh, auto transformer only single winding is there. Hmm? Uh, so same winding act as a primary also as a secondary also here you can say all turns are acting on primary and few turns are acting on secondary in step down reverse is the case for step up okay uh, here also same as that of transformer single phase ac is the input and single phase ac is the output okay same case for this one also single phase ac input single phase ac output 
only the application is input is constant and output is variable okay output voltage is variable again uh, here uh, if you compare it with the transformer what do you think copper losses will be less in transformer or auto transformer <clears throat> as here single wind you you can manufacture uh, uh, suppose you take uh, one kva transformer also and one kva auto transformer also you will find less copper is required for auto transformer so less copper loss efficiency will be more as less copper is required means automatically size is less uh, again uh, costing will be less so these all are the advantages of auto transformer over transformer of same kva rating hmm. what is the disadvantage of it um, means turns are common on primary and secondary so dangerous it is like suppose this is the step down step down means suppose here primary side voltage you are going to apply 200 and secondary is 100 volt so whatever is the load you are going to connect across secondary that can withstand 100 volt okay that can withstand 100 volt so accidentally agar ye yaha pe break ho jata hai open ho jata hai this one so what will happen complete 200 volt will be available across output and this load can withstand only 100 volt so that is the disadvantage with this auto transformer otherwise um, <clears throat> safe it is to use so only you have to take care uh, no open circuit will be there hmm? and windings are continuous uh, between two input primary terminal and two input secondary terminal okay uh, so this is about the auto transformer that is this one part included in your syllabus now we again go back to direct loading method so direct loading method this one is the auto transformer symbol all of you can see hmm? this one is the auto transformer used here to apply variable ac voltage it's a single phase uh, 2.16 kva 8 ampere 270 now this Auto transformer is also called as variable also and demonstrate also. Variable AC voltage you are getting across its two output terminal. That's why it is called as variable. And this variable voltage, <coughs> if you apply across lamps, then their intensity go on changing. That's why it is called as demonstrate also. Uh, all of you may know intensity of lamps depends on voltage directly proportional. More the voltage you apply, more will be the intensity. Okay, so that's why it is called as demonstrate also. So auto transformer, variac and demonstrate, same thing. Hmm? Uh, its specification you can find over here. Uh, input is constant. This one is the phase and neutral single phase AC voltage is the input constant. Uh, this one is switch, double pole single throw switch it is. Nowadays MCBs are used, two pole MCB you can use here for phase and neutral. Okay, uh, and output is tapped across this two output terminal. So uh, you can see these two output terminals are connected across primary winding of transformer and across this one voltmeter is also connected across primary. So whatever the knob on this top of this auto transformer that you go on rotating in clockwise direction. And once you find the reading of this voltmeter is 110 volt stop rotating. Means you have applied constant voltage 110 volt. In this method, input voltage constant we are going to keep at 110 volt. We are interested in measuring the current flowing through primary winding. So one ammeter is connected. We are interested in measuring the voltage drop across primary winding. Uh, so one voltmeter is connected across uh, in a uh, across primary. We are interested in measuring the power consumed on primary. So one wattmeter is connected on primary side. This is the symbol of wattmeter. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Wattmeter it is having four terminals. You can see here M, L, C, and V. These four terminals. What is the formula for DC power? Uh, DC direct current circuit P is equals to VI. So in DC circuit, only voltmeter ammeter reading is sufficient. You can calculate the power. But what is the case in AC circuit? For AC circuit, formula for power is VI cos phi. Cos phi also required, and that's why in AC circuit, wattmeter is used to measure the power. So we wanted to measure power uh, delivered to primary winding. 
that's why when white filter we have connected on primary side we wanted to measure the power consumed by load on secondary that's why white filter is connected on secondary side also when you physically see the white meter in lab that instrument uh, you can find it is having the uh, four terminals and in four terminals mlcd m means you have to connect it to mains see here it is connected to mains l means you have to connect it to load load on primary primary winding itself is a load on secondary we are going to connect here lamps so l stands for load c terminal means common terminal of current coil and pressure coil whatever the upper one more inductive you can see in nature uh, that is called as current coil what matter how you always you have to connect so that it carries a load current on secondary also you can see this current coil of white meter it is carrying a total load current and on primary primary winding itself is a load so whatever the current flowing through primary winding is flowing through current coil of white meter current coil two terminals are marked as m and l here m is not printed this one terminal is m okay and in white meter you can see next one terminal is c so c is called as common terminal of current coil and pressure coil this one lower one the one which is more resistive is pressure coil or voltage coil it is called so how you have to connect this pressure coil so that supply voltage will be there across this winding see here you can see on primary side 110 volt is there across cv terminals means across the pressure coil and on secondary you can see whatever the induced emf in secondary and we have seen e2 4.44 fim uh, n2 and that will be 220 in this case here uh, and that remains constant so that 220 volt will be there across the pressure coil means watt meter whenever you wanted to connect its current coil always you have to connect so that total load current will flow through that okay and uh, pressure coil you have to connect so that supply voltage will be there across it like this always you have to connect the watt meter now c means common terminal of current coil and pressure coil m and c these must be connected internally these two are open so externally you while performing the practical you have to take one wire and connect between m and c and what's about for v v is for voltage range selection okay uh, so for voltage range selection we uh, will show you <clears throat> See here, uh, like this wooden box you will find. Yes, a wooden box right there, watt meter. Hmm? Uh, on its top, you can see here, suppose whatever we have used for direct loading method in lab, you will find six terminal on its top, out of which only four you have to use. For first three mark, M, L, and C. M means you have to connect it to mains. L means you have to connect it to load. C means common terminal of current coil and pressure coil. So you can see here, one wire is connected between M and C. Take one wire and connect this. You have to short M and C. Hmm? Uh, next one is V terminal. So V terminal, you can see here, three options are there. V means voltage range you have to select. So you will find on watt meter, its top three V terminals are there, 150, 300, and 600. So on primary, we are going to apply 110 volt. So 150 is enough to select, okay? So four terminals, M, L, C, V. Again, on its display, two like this, two plates, you can see two metallic plates and four screws are there. So uh, using that four screw, you can connect these two metallic plates in parallel. If you connect them in parallel, current range will be 10 ampere. See here, I have written current range is 10 ampere. And why V range here? I have written 150 because this one V terminal we are going to use. On its display, uh, uh, you can see a wooden color ka box. Hai. On its top, you can see these six terminals are there. Then these two metallic plates are there. Along with it, one pointer is there and one scale is there, this one. Okay, so ye jo scale hai, it starts from zero and it ends at 750 watt. It ends at 750 watt. This maximum scale deflection is 750 watt. When we calculate the multiplying factor, all of you can see here, I have used here 750 watt. This it's a maximum scale deflection. Means where exactly the scale ends. Maximum scale deflection, full scale deflection. Okay. So on this display here, it is written 5 ampere and 10 ampere. 
so uh, current range it is about the current range so when you connect these two plates in parallel current range will be 10 ampere because 4 and 4 ohm for example in parallel resultant will be 2 ohm means if you connect the plates in parallel resistance decreases so current range maximum you have to select that is 10 ampere reverse is the case for second watt meter now on second watt meter also you will find like this six terminals are there mlcv uh, six terminal for V3 options are there. Uh, so M and C you have to short, M you have to connect to mains, L you have to connect to load and on secondary side induced voltage is 220 volt. So you can't go for 150 compulsory you have to go there 300. So you can see for W2 watt meter voltage range is 300 volt and on its display whatever the two plates are over here using that uh, four screw we have connected them in para, in uh, series in series means overlapping each other ye do screw hai lose them and uh, one plate on it and above it second plate like this okay so first one plate uh, or above it uh, second plate means two plates overlap each other so suppose for example 4 and 4 ohm in series total will be 8 ohm resistance increases so whatever on the display 5 ampere and 10 ampere current range return out of that 5 ampere you have to select for w2 because here plates are connected on its body um, in series okay that's fine Now, once you get V range and I range, like for first one watt meter, what is the V range? 150 volt. What is the I range? 10 ampere. Maximum scale deflection, I told you where the scale ends, 750 watt. So using this, you can calculate the multiplying factor for first watt meter and for second watt meter. Formula is V range into I range into cos phi divided by maximum scale deflection. So V range 150, uh, I range 10. Power factor of both the watt meter is 1. It is given by manufacturer and scale ends at 750 watt. So multiplying factor you will get 2 means whatever the reading. Suppose this one watt meter, uh, this is the pointer scale arrangement it is having. So if pointer is at 100 watt on that scale, so your reading is not 100 watt. 100 into 2 will be the reading. That is 200 watt. So whenever in the um, observation table you note down the readings, here you can see readings <coughs> uh, for watt meter, this, uh, for this uh, transformer experiment, see here V1, I1, W1, V2, I2, W2, okay. So here W1 and W2, whatever the readings we get, we multiply it by 2 because multiplying factor for both the watt meter is 2. Hmm? Uh, here also you can see for second one watt meter, for second one watt meter, what is the I range? 300 volt, uh, sorry, what is the V range? 300 volt. What is the I range? Plates are connected in series. So 5 ampere is the I range. So multiplying factor formula, V range into I range into cos phi. Cos phi is 1 divided by 750. Uh, so uh, it is uh, 2, okay? Multiplying factor is 2. Means here also, whatever the reading you will get, suppose pointer is on 300, so reading will be 600 watt. Okay, this is the application of uh, uh, to calculate the multiplying factor. Why multiplying factor is required to calculate? So see here, V range you check of watt meter, I range you check. So V range into I range into cos phi divided by maximum scale deflection. Using this, you can calculate the multiplying factor for W1. Similarly, here also V range I range is written. Uh, you can check where the V wire is connected. Means A jo V terminal and this one. To which terminal it is connected, whether to 150 or 300 to, or 600. So accordingly, here it is 150 and here it is connected to 300. That's why we have written this. Then next, you check on this wattmeter whether the plates are connected in series or in parallel. If they are in parallel, take on its display. On its display, it is written current range, 5 ampere dash 10 ampere. So whether to select 5 or 10, it depends on plates. So plates you check if they are connected in parallel more current range whatever is the more value that you have to select more here is 10 so that's why i have written 10 uh, in second one white meter you will find plates are connected in series so lesser current range 5 m okay so using these two values and scale you check where it ends you can calculate the multiplying factor means whatever the reading you will get multiply it by multiplying factor and that one you have to write in observation table okay 
So wet matter will give you power consume on primary side, power consume on secondary side. Once I get output AC power and input AC power, and if I do W2 by W1, what I can calculate? If I do W2 by W1, what I can calculate? <clears throat> Hmm? Efficiency, W2 is output, W1 is input, means it is a efficiency. Efficiency of this uh, transformer, you can calculate using W2 by W1, okay? Uh, so, uh, you note down, you can note down now, go on change. First one reading, we are going to take at no load. Keep 110 volt constant in this method across primary winding. Keep secondary open for second reading. For second reading, do not connect anything across secondary. Hmm? So, in this case, will any EMF get induced in secondary winding? Suppose I am going to apply 110 volt on primary. Will any EMF get induced on secondary? Yes, Second, ha, secondary is open, so EMF get induced and it will be maximum 220 volt. So, so for that, what we will do across secondary, we will connect one voltmeter and we will note down. Hmm? Do not connect anything across secondary except voltmeter and then apply 110 volt. Uh, so, secondary is open, 110 volt you will get, <clears throat> you can find at no load condition induced EMF, okay. So, here also in observation table you can see as secondary is open, I2 and W2 will be zero and but voltage get induced in it to measure it, we are going to connect one voltmeter across primary, this is the no load condition and at no load condition we have seen in previous lecture, uh, primary side current will be very less and primary side power consume also will be very less, okay. And in uh, transfer of parameters, we have seen at no load condition, whatever the power get uh, consumed on primary, it is utilized only to overcome the core loss, which is constant from no load to full load condition. Plus, it is used to overcome the primary winding copper loss only, which is very less. And from second reading, go on putting load on transformer and note down V1, I1, W1, V2, I2, W2. V1, we are going to keep constant 110 volt. Okay. So you can see here a number of times we have seen as load on transformer, you go on increasing I1, I2 increases. Each and every lamp is of 100 watt. We used to connect it in parallel load on transformer you are increasing so more power it requires that's why you can see here uh, in all voltages are constant v1 is constant e1 is constant e2 is constant so how transformer supply increase power to increase load by taking more and more current so all of you can see i1 and i2 increases isn't it so as i1 and i2 are increasing load is increasing uh, so uh, power consume on primary and secondary also increases. So all of you can see here I1, I2, W1, W2, these go on increasing hmm? as you go on increasing the load on transformer. But, uh, so efficiency you can calculate, use the formula W2 by W1 into 100, you will get the efficiency. Okay. Now observe the value of V2. What is happening with V2? Increases, decreases, remains constant. Decreases. Ah, very good. It is decreasing. So whenever I say uh, this voltmeter reading, it uh, as I am increasing the load on transformer, this uh, voltage decreases. So that is the case only for R and L type of load. On transformer, we are increasing the load, isn't it? If you whatever the load you are go, uh, connecting across transformer secondary. If, if it is of R and L type, means only purely resistive, purely inductive or combination of R and L, any combination, series, parallel, whatever it is, then only what happens as you go on increasing the load on transformer, V2 decreases. V2 decreases. So what is expected? V2 is what? Voltage across load. What is expected? This voltage across load should remain constant. But what is happening as you go on increasing the load, voltage across load decreasing. Then what is expected? This change in voltage, drop in voltage should be less. At low load, you get maximum voltage E2, isn't it? And as you go on increasing the load, voltage across load V2, that is VL is changing. And for R and L type of load, it decreases. So how you, this is called as voltage regulation. Uh, change in voltage from no load voltage to full load with respect to no load voltage. Formula of voltage regulation is 
e2 minus v2 upon e2. What is expected? Voltage across load should remain constant, but it don't happen. At no load condition, you will get induced voltage in secondary winding E2 and it remains constant throughout. And then later on, you go on connecting load across secondary of transformer. As you increase the load, R and L type V2 decreases. So V2 is decreasing. Means in this formula, which one is greater for R and L type of load? E2 is greater or V2 is greater in this formula of voltage regulation? E2. E2 is greater, means always voltage regulation, you will get positive or negative, here minus sign is there. Positive. Positive, okay. MCQ question for R and L type of uh, load, voltage regulation is positive or negative. So it is positive, why? Uh, or another question, uh, for R and L type of load, whether E2 is greater or V2 is greater. So E2 is greater, okay. So as E2 is greater than V2, voltage regulation is positive. So across secondary of transformer, as you go on connecting R and L type of load and load you continuously go on increasing, what is happening? V2 decreases. Why V2 decreases? <coughs> we'll take. Yeah. <coughs> Why V2 decreases? What is the voltage equation on secondary side that all of you know? If you remember, E2 minus I2 R2 is equals to V2 is equals to VL where V2 and VL is a voltage drop across load voltage. Isn't it? This one number of times equation we have seen in previous lecture. Hmm? Now see here, consider it's the R and L type of load. Across secondary of transformer, you go on increasing the load. You go on increasing the load here. So on secondary, if you see there are the two resistances. One is power winding resistance. Another is load resistance. I'm talking about load resistance. Okay. So <clears throat> on secondary, as you go on increasing load on transformer, load get connected in parallel. So what will be total load resistance? What will happen with total load resistance? Suppose huh, it will decrease, isn't it? And what's about E2 induced EMF on secondary? It is constant. So it, uh, it is constant. So voltage is constant. Uh, resistance is decreasing. So that's why current increases. This one number of times we have seen in lectures, isn't it? So I2 is increasing as you go on increasing the load. And as I2 increases, what will happen with I2 R2 drop? That also will increase or E2 is constant and here negative sign is there. So what will happen with V2 or VL? Decrease. It will decrease. And that's why I'm saying R and L type of load as you go on increasing on transformer voltage decreases. Why it decreases clear? Because uh, <clears throat> load you are connecting in parallel, uh, load you are increasing. So total load resistance will decrease, voltage is constant and that's why I2 increases. So I2, R2 voltage drop will increase. And as I2, R2 voltage drop is increasing, this one parameter is constant. That's why V2 decreases okay so as v2 is decreasing here <clears throat> as v2 is decreasing e2 is greater than v2 so voltage regulation is positive hmm? so voltage regulation is positive so voltage regulation v2 is decreasing e2 is constant so voltage regulation will go on increasing isn't it so graph if you plot for this you will get it like this see uh, along x-axis current Secondary winding current is there uh, along y axis, voltage regulation is there. Dependent parameter on y axis, independent parameter on x axis. Voltage regulation depends on current. That's why voltage regulation along y axis. When there is a no load on secondary, I2 is 0. E2, uh, V2 is equals to E2. So V2 is equals to E2 at no load condition. So numerator you will get 0. So voltage regulation is 0. Okay, and as you go on increasing load on transformer, R and L type of load, V2 decreases, E2 is constant, that's why voltage regulation go on increasing. So you will get graph like this. Okay, graph clear. Hmm? So uh, this is for R and L type of load, huh? whatever I'm saying up till now, R and L type of load means <clears throat> what is happening, how you can define the voltage regulation, it is the change in voltage across load from no load condition to full load condition with respect to no load voltage, okay? 
uh, it is the change in voltage across load from no load voltage to full load voltage with respect to no load voltage. So what is expected voltage across load should remain constant, V2 should remain constant, although you are increasing load on transformer, but it is not happening. For R and N type of load, this uh, voltage decreases. So this drop in a voltage at least should be less. This drop in a voltage should be less means change in voltage regulation should be less. Means ideal value of voltage regulation is 0%. Isn't it? What is, what is the ideal value of voltage regulation? 0%. Whenever we say it's the ideal transformer. So ideal transformer is the one whose voltage regulation is 0%, whose R1 and R2 primary and secondary uh, windings are uh, resistance is 0, uh, leakage flux is 0, efficiency is 100%, copper losses are 0, power losses are 0, is the ideal transformer. And ideal transformer practically doesn't exist. Every transformer is practical, isn't it? So practical transformer, if it is, then Efficiency will be less than 100%. Voltage regulation can never be 0%. There will be the leakage flux. Copper winding resistance will be there, R1, R2. Isn't it? Um, uh, whatever the relative permeability of the core, it can be. It can never be infinity. Uh, it, it will be very high, but it can never be. It is high. Means in some thousand it is. From material to material, it is different. It can never be possible infinity. Isn't it? So like these are the terms related to ideal and practical transformer. Based on ideal and practical transformer, questions are there. Huh? Whatever the points I told you. Ideal is the one, leakage flux is zero, R1, R2 is zero, uh, voltage regulation is zero percent, uh, copper losses, core losses are zero, uh, R1, R2 is zero is the ideal. Hmm? Based on these questions are there, <clears throat> you will get asked. Okay. Uh, so means what is the conclusion uh, ideal like efficiency what is the ideal value of efficiency 100% similarly ideal value of voltage regulation is 0% but 0% you will get at no load and as you go on increasing the load for R and N type of load voltage regulation go on increasing this is about R and N type of load what happens with capacitive type of load for capacitive type of load, all of you know, if every load get connected in parallel across transformer and if capacitors you connect in parallel, in 12th you have learned the formula C equivalent is what? C equivalent is equals to C1 plus C2 plus C3, isn't it? So because of this condition and also for RC in second unit, we have seen if it is series RC or uh, if it is series RLC more capacitive, if you remember Z formula R minus J X, that imaginary part is negative. If imaginary part is negative, phi tan inverse of imaginary part upon real part, that phi angle is negative and sine phi, sine of minus phi, minus sine phi. That's why reactive power Q, V I sine phi will be negative. So capacitive type of load supply negative reactive volt ampere. And that's why, and also C equivalent is C1 plus C2 plus C3. Because of this, as capacitive type of load, you go on increasing uh, on transformer and it get connected in parallel. So as you load, uh, load this capacitive type of load, you go on increasing V2 increases. And V2 will become greater than E2. If in this formula V2 becomes greater than E2, voltage regulation will be positive or negative there for capacitive type of load. Negative. Negative. Very good. Voltage regulation is negative. So MCQ question for uh, capacitive type of load, whether V2 is greater or E2 is greater. So V2. For voltage regulation is positive or negative? Negative. So graphically, you can see here, uh, here with the graph, first one graph is for what? Along x-axis, I have written load current. That is the secondary winding current. And along y-axis, it's a voltage across load. So dotted line is a no load voltage. E2 is equals to V2. Hmm? Uh, 4.44 F I M N2 that all of you know it is constant and for R and L type of load as you go on increasing the load voltage across load go on decreasing okay but for capacitive type of load what is happening voltage across load go on increasing so this is all about the voltage regulation voltage regulation ideal value is zero percent and it must be less okay efficiency what's about efficiency that must be maximum Okay, and 100% is expected. <clears throat> so, 
So in direct loading method, how we can calculate voltage regulation using this formula E2 minus V2 upon E2 into 100 is the percentage voltage regulation and percentage efficiency W2 by W1. So like this direct loading method, you can carry out to calculate its efficiency and voltage regulation. Then voltage regulation versus I2 graph, you have to plot. This one we have seen voltage regulation versus I2 graph. Okay, this one. Mm, just now I explained to you another graph you have to plot efficiency versus output power. So um, about the efficiency part uh, that is we are going to cover in next lecture. Okay. So efficiency part and numericals on efficiency and voltage regulation is left. So one hour more required then we'll finish with this unit. Okay.